Welcome, Bike Waiver Wire Tuesday. Lame ass week, but we got some under the radar players that I feel like could possibly set you up for success. There are six teams on a buy, so it's a terrible week to be a terrible week for the waiver wire, but we're going to dig deep. All right. First order of business Miles Sanders sitting here double cheeked up on a Tuesday. 0.5 pass rush receiving touchdowns against Houston on Thursday night football. All right. Miles Sanders has four touchdowns in his last four games. The Houston Texans just got absolutely fathered by Derrick Henry. They are bar none the worst run defense in actually there are some awful, brutal run defenses in the NFL, but they are one of them. They're in that tier of brutality, okay? Houston, Philly, Thursday night should be one of the ugliest matchups of the year. Miles Sanders is obviously the star running back for Philadelphia. I don't see a world in which they do not lean on their running backs, and he does not get into the end zone on this one. So go nail this on prize picks right now. If it's your first time on prize picks, go use promo code BDGE on there, and they are going to double whatever you put down on the app. You put down 10, they'll give you 20. You put down 50, they'll they'll give you 100 to play with, all right? Go nail Miles Sanders, Thursday night football, you love to see it so as i typically like to say for these waiver wire videos let's tuck our shirts in first I like to try to tell the story of the week rather than just going name by name and talking about every single player. And there's not much of a story to uh, to tell in this one. This is more like sitting down on the toilet and you're going through light skimming of a magazine and there's like six pages in the magazine. That's what this week's waiver wire is. It's ugly. I think the first order of business is to talk about the Baltimore Ravens because they had three players go into the game less than 100% and three players leave the game worse than they came into the game with and might possibly miss time going forward. So let's talk about Gus Edwards, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman. The only one of which we know is out for this week for sure. They play on Monday Night Football at New Orleans. So they do get an extra day of rest. We know Rashad Bateman is out with a foot injury for at least, I think, two weeks. So his direct backup, I guess, at this point is Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay is kind of the next guy up in this wide receiver core. He's a very different player than Bateman. He's he's versatile. They use him in a lot of different ways. He, he did it explode for a rushing touchdown last week. So they get him involved in the passing game. He's already set a career high in receiving yards this year through just eight games. So he's the guy I'd be targeting on the waiver wire if available. Behind him, it's like Demarcus Robinson and um, James Prochet. With Rashad Bateman playing 17% of the snaps last week and then leaving, we had Devin Duvernay play 66%, and then Prochet and uh, Demarcus Robinson both split 63% of the snaps at wide receiver. Now, Demarcus Robinson actually had a decently good game, eight targets, six catches, 64 yards, and he's had some good games with like Patrick Mahomes when he was on the Chiefs. He'd have some long touchdowns, and I think he's, I, I would definitely prefer him to James Prochet, but I don't want to be starting either of those backup Baltimore wide receivers. Uh, Devin Duvernay is a guy that I think you can get into your lineups, and he'll probably be like a top 36 ranked wide receiver this week again this is a huge bye week we've got the browns the cowboys the broncos the giants the steelers and the 49ers on buys so people are out there hurting so duvernay is the play but don't be expected if we see something from demarcus robinson or prochet like one of those guys makes a long play down the field or whatever never going to get consistency out of them mark andrews injured his shoulder left early on in the game isaiah likely is a dude who in the summer or actually in the spring when we were writing up our rookie draft guide, one of our products, Isaiah Likely, I comped him to Jonu Smith. And it seems like Isaiah Likely has basically become what we wanted Jonu Smith to become. He is a very versatile player, uh, a really good pass catcher, had a really good preseason, training camp, all that stuff. And when he's filled in, he is clearly like the best playmaker on the field behind Mark Andrews when Rashad Bateman is also off the field, right? Like Isaiah Likely, whether or not Mark Andrews plays, Isaiah Likely needs to be on the field for like 70 to 80% of the snaps. He's a great pass catching weapon. If Mark Andrews misses time, I'm going to put Isaiah Likely probably as like the tight end eight, maybe higher. I don't know what the week is looking like because there are a lot of buys. If you haven't heard this before, there are six teams on buys this week. But Isaiah Likely is a dude that without a doubt should be owned in leagues, especially if Mark Andrews is going to miss this week. Uh, he is day-to-day, though. We don't know. Uh, he m- very well might play. Same thing with Gus Edwards. has a hamstring injury. They've also listed him day-to-day. But hamstring injuries tend to linger for a while. So if he misses time, Kenyon Drake will be the guy again. When you have a bad day, give up. Go home and sleep. Fuck it. Try again tomorrow. Not every bad day can become a good day. Some days are fucked. 
Fantasy is a motherfucker, man. Fantasy is really a, a piece of shit game where stuff like that happens regularly. But Kenyon Drake, bike if Gus Edward misses time. Greg Dulcich at tight end is also playing. Uh, he's running every route. He's not pass blocking. He is the guy right now. So Greg Dulcich is another dude who if you are out at tight end or if even if you need a flex play i feel like he's viable in this week actually take that back he's on a fucking buy shit never mind so the only other injury that i think has like a real impact on the fantasy landscape is mike williams is they're coming back from the buy they play at atlanta josh palmer is kind of like the next guy up people continue to get really excited about josh palmer he's like one of the most mid wide receivers that i've ever seen and it's like people are like oh he's gonna play the mike williams role it's like being out at like 2 30 a.m and you go to get Bleecker Street Pizza, and it's closed, and you're like, oh, that's okay, we can order Domino's Pizza. That's what putting Josh Palmer into your lineup kind of feels like when you had Mike Williams, so it sucked. And to be honest with you, Keenan Allen's going to be back, and he's probably going to get like 12 to 14 targets. I wouldn't be surprised if DeAndre Carter plays just as well, if not better, than Josh Palmer over this three, four-week window where Mike Williams is out. So I do prefer Josh Palmer only because we know he's going to run the routes and he's an outside wide receiver where that's where they're lacking right now without Mike Williams. But I think DeAndre Carter is also worth an ad. Eckler's probably going to get a million targets. Keenan Allen's going to get a million targets. So those guys need to be rostered because Mike Williams is going to be out for a long time. And even when he does get back, that ankle is going to be a problem for the rest of the year, most likely. But here are some dudes that we need to really be looking at on a closer scale because they're highly unknown but have a ton of upside going forward the first of which is James Cook he is very clearly in a way the number two running back in Buffalo Zach Moss is not playing at all James Cook is getting some rushing work he's getting passing work he's making explosive plays and you can't put him into your lineup but if something were to happen to Devin Singletary James Cook would play a major role in a major offense so James Cook is a dude who I could see if something happens in Singletary there could be like a three to four week span where James Cook is a legit RB1 or a top 15 option that is super widely available on the waiver wire. Now here is my sneaky pickup of the week. Deion Jackson. Deion Jackson of the Indianapolis Colts. We saw him have a major game or two earlier on in this season. Now there's two things at play here. One, Jonathan Taylor re-injured his ankle. So while he might play this week, he might not play this week. They play at New England, so it's a tough matchup regardless. He hasn't looked like his old self. Taylor is scary season right now. I know Halloween's over, but it's still spooky season for Taylor. Number two, Naeem Hines. This name is being thrown around vividly for the trade deadline today. So by the time you guys watch this, I think the trade deadline is at 4 p.m. Eastern time today on Tuesday. Maybe he got traded. Maybe he didn't. But if he does get traded, Deion Jackson becomes the pass catcher most likely in this offense. And if something happens to Taylor, Deion Jackson takes over the workhorse role, which we saw him do so really effectively already this season. So Deion Jackson is a dude that you should keep a very crisp eye on. We like Paris Campbell, Alec Pierce in that offense. They're all right, but they, I wouldn't expect much success with Sam Ellinger. What other sneaky pickups do we have? The Rams' backfield right now is an absolute fucking shit show between Ronnie Rivers. Like, this is what they they went on their bye week, and they were like, the way to fix our offense is to give the five foot seven Ronnie Rivers more carries than anyone in the backfield. I'm not going and, and breaking the bank on Ronnie Rivers. Kyron Williams was activated to return last week but that also means he still has like a window of a i believe it's a 21 day window in which he can return so it doesn't mean he's going to be activated this week okay he could be activated next week he could be bad he could split carries with all these guys and each of them get six carries so kyron williams for sure is a stash because they need some help they need some kind of spark on the offense right now and if cooper cup is out you know that's not even something that we talked about yet and it's not even a wide receiver we talked about but like van jefferson could step in it's an ugly situation out there in um uh, LA for sure. Ben Skoranek is another pickup, of course. Kyron Williams is a dude that I would stash. I'm not expecting crazy upside because this offense does not lend itself to having running back success right now, but he should be added as well. I think both guys, Kyron Williams, Ronnie Rivers, added for very, very few fab dollars and kind of see how it plays out. Traylon Burks is also eligible to return. I believe he's uh, targeting a week 10 return, and there's also probably going to be some lag on his injury, and he's a rookie. He needs to get back up to speed. So again, he's someone you could put on your IR, I think, still right now, but I'm not like overly excited about it. Correll Patterson is expected to return week nine. So Caleb Huntley had a big game this week. Uh, Tyler Algier had a big game last week. So it's impossible to tell who's actually going to have a big game when for this team. So if he returns week nine, I'm excited about Cordero Patterson. There might be a little bit of lag on his return as well from this injury because, you know, this kind of injury does linger throughout when you have a serious enough injury where it 
put you out for four weeks. That fifth week might not be 100%. They play the Chargers who have a terrible run defense. I don't know if you could start any of these guys. If Corderell plays, I'm probably going to play him. If he doesn't, I think you could probably start either Algier or Caleb Huntley as like a shitty flex play. Again, six teams on by this week. Hang. That's really all I got. There's no real like deeper dives that I'm excited about in the least right now. Everyone else that people are telling you to pick up are like really highly owned dudes like Rondell Moore and Garrett Wilson and those types. Obviously, if they're available, go go get you some. But yeah, I'm, I'm probably out. The guy, the names that I'm most excited about are these like James Cook, Deion Jackson types that have upside going forward. Again, just keep the eye on the Baltimore Ravens team because their offense is in absolute fucking shambles and they need some playmakers right now. That's what we got for this week. Okay. I love y'all. Thank you for joining me button that looks like this if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you are new and make sure you go hit that prize picks line of miles sanders getting into the paint box because it's happening bye